If I call break, you take one step back, don't throw punches around the back of the head, and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck, lads. So much at stake here. Liam Williams, who's looked so impressive in recent fights. Alantes Fox stands, well, he told me, six foot five. The official stats say six foot four. What I can tell you is that as a middleweight, somebody somewhere will say they've been taller, but I don't recall seeing a taller middleweight in a high-level fight ever. And being that height can be such an advantage or a curse because you're a massive target to hit. It's how effective you are with that jab. But if that jab's loose, slow, or comes back low, then you're a target to be hit. So he has to be very sharp with that left hand and the movement constantly turning all the time because because Williams will close the gap as quick as he can. Liam coming into this on the back of three impressive wins against Mark Heffron, Joe Mullander, and particularly the durable Frenchman, Karim Assure, who he finished in four minutes, 51 seconds. That was, as you said at the time, Barry, it was a message. It was a message, and but no, this is a real gauge here for Williams. He's boxing a guy who's boxed for a world title. He's boxed, you know, Andre. He was a real good high up, high up, high end operator. So we will know where he is now with this, on after this fight and this performance. Yeah, beaten by Andrade a couple of years ago. That's good from Williams. And the left hand as well. Just, to, just he hit me two bo good body shots and flipped that left hand up to the head. He said it in the run-up to this, Williams, forget the fact that people say he's long, he's tall, that he's like fighting an octopus. I'm going to step through and smash oh, it. Good. That's a good right hand. It is good. I'll tell you what's happening at the minute. He's out jabbing the taller boxer, which is uh, something you didn't really see to expect. And again, good timing out beats, beats things. Like, uh, disadvantages of sometimes speed or reach. Oh, good left nice. hand as well. And again. And the hand speed here is with Williams. Two cracking jabs again, right on cue, Barry. But he's not rushing anything here, Williams. It's good, so good display. He's he still, he knows he can't rush in with that taller reach. If he falls short, he's going to have to pay there with that right hand there to Fox. So he's just biding his time, waiting, waiting for those chances. Then he's exploding in those combinations. And also, because Fox, oh, he, he dangles that left hand a little bit low. When he throws that jab, it sometimes comes back to the waist. So Williams will be looking for that right hand as the rounds go on, if they go on. Fox has had three wins since losing that world title shot against Andrade. Oh, that's a good shot, lovely from Williams. And he's coming on strong here in this opening round. There's a good little riposte from Fox, good left hand. He's cut up underneath the left eye there, Williams, I think. A good jab from him though there. Or is it a graze? Just underneath the left eye there of Liam Williams. Does have that habit of blinking a little bit no, when he's yeah. boxing, but I think there is blood there. I think and I think it's above actually rather than beyond. Well we'll have a look at that in the corner. There's a good right hand right at the end of an opening round which Liam Williams dominated. <laughs> Liam Williams cut, you can see, above that left eye. Dominic Ingle doing a good job. And no sense of panic in that corner. But apart from the cut, he boxed fantastic. I thought it was a great round from Liam Williams. Composed, picked this... No, picked this his slots really well. Oh, good right hand there from Fox. That was a really good right hand there from Fox. Well, Fox will realise that Williams is cut. The man who was described as fighting like an octopus by Brian Rose. Got to get a little bit lower there, Williams. I think, well, I, I think that right hand shook him up a little bit. But that first round was great from Lee Williams. He was landing at will, closing the distance quite easily with that jab. The only problem was the cut. But then started this round, then took a right hand and... Oh, not far off with that right hand there, Williams. Not the first time that Liam Williams has had problems with cuts.
Good jab there by Fox, just catching Williams coming forward. Got to remember to come back with that left hook there, Williams. Just maybe a little bit slow after landing with a good right hand. Just to follow through with it. Really good opening round for Williams. Fox just looking as though he's settling a bit here, but there's a good jab from Williams. Fox just trying to sit on that back foot there, isn't he? Just trying to catch Williams coming forward. Or maybe a little lean back left hook. Good body shot there from Fox. Andy Lee was a tall middleweight, but this guy <laughs> must be two or three inches taller. He really has got a huge reach. Good wow. shot, good yeah. right hand, Williams. And again, there was something that, it, that you notice with Fox. Yeah, because he has that left hand low. If you can slide that front foot in, that right hand's a target to a, a punch the throw, sorry. Bit of a scrappy round though, he was very clinical about the first round from Williams, but it's been a little bit scrappier there. Fox is up this game a little bit. But I still feel that Williams is maybe doing just a little bit better. Shot. Oh, a good right hand. Williams again showing that punching power. He sort of turns away, doesn't he, Fox, when he gets hit? And it's not like he's riding the shot, he takes the shot flush. Then he sort of turns his head away, like, like he's expecting another one, or he doesn't fancy it. Fox with his dad in the corner, Troy, professional boxer brother, Michael also at ringside, close around than the first one, but Barry giving it again to Liam Williams. The first four rounds are going to be hard, do you understand? What's his game? He's great. It's a lot of gash there on the left eyelid. Calm work by Dominic Engel in the corner. But we got close-ups on some of the action in the first round when that cut happened. And perhaps you can make up your own mind, whether it's a clash of heads or a punch which causes it. Well, who knows? It's anybody's guess yeah, there. It's hard to see there. And if you just know what the referee said, that's that's the most important part. Where the referee had said it was a, cut, a punch or a, or a clash of heads. So we go into the third round. Second round was close, Barry. You still edged Williams, did you? I did in the end. I think he came on strong at the end of the round, but I think I thought he did take a good right hand to the start of the round, and that was a worry. But and Fox landed with more shots. I still left it the body there from Fox. Fox was keen to emphasise oh, yeah. the right hand from Williams. Keen to emphasise at the press conference earlier on this week that he's not just a, a range fighter, that he's a, an all-round package, and that he can fight inside. But he should be trying to throw, whip that right uppercut. Then as Williams slides forward, throw the jab, and then whip that right uppercut right through the middle. Just like to see Williams just get a little bit on the balls of his feet. I know that'll take away a bit of the, the purpose on the shot. Just so we can get a bit of rhythm to his work, so we can easier to, to jump into these attacks. I think he's just set his feet a little bit, just a, a little bit slower than he was in the first. Perhaps intent to show that he's the one with the power. Yeah, of course, and he is, I think. But I just think you get a bit of rhythm to his work and start like he did in the first round, just get a bit more, more fluency back and then get in there close and then sort of plant your feet to land the bigger shots. Winner of this one would become number one challenger for the WBO Championship. Oh, 
Again, again. Oh, the shot. He pretty much walked into that one, did it? Alantes Fox. I'm not sure if he's cut now on, on the, he is. the bridge of the nose. There's there. blood coming down, I think, from... I think it might be the left eyebrow, and he's dabbing uncomfortably at it. It was certainly that right hand that Williams caught him with, right of the guard that did it. So both men cut already early in this fight. We're only in the third round. Good body shot there from Williams. Well, we'll have a closer look at that between rounds, but uh, first inclination was that it was a punch from Williams which caused the damage. Yeah, well, I think it was the right hand through the guard. Decent little round here for Williams. Very good. Take some water. Are you ready to fight the well, you were right, Barry. The damage is on the bridge of the nose. We thought initially it was a punch. Let's take another look. In we go. Oh, well, might, might have been a bit of elbow as well. An elbow, possibly. I, I don't think it's um, not deliberate. No, I thought it was a, sh a, a good right hand actually. But I think it is just, yeah, it just skims with the elbow. Well caught there. The guys in the truck, but. It's not exactly Colin Jones versus Donald Curry worrying worry no. signs, is it yet? Not yet. Another Williams round? Yeah, for me, I thought, yeah. So three rounds to nil on Barry's card for the Welshman. So he always believed it was his oh. destiny to get a world title, and he's at bossing this again here, really trying to bully Fox around. Well, Fox, Fox moves his body wildly to get out of the way, and I think it must be effective for him for the most time. But the fact he got like Williams, he won't stop throwing shots when he gets close. It's not working for him. So he needs to fire back. Fox under pressure. That's good right hand there from Williams. This was the round he said he was going to finish it in the build-up. Williams, he said four rounds, that's all it'll take. Obviously, oh, there's shot. a bit of bravado when you talk about fights impending confrontation but he is certainly ahead and is a dominant fighter right now. Looking nice and strong there, isn't he, Liam Williams? And it's fun when he gets closer, just you feel a little bit of panic around Fox. So oh, great shot. shot. Tremendous right hand, and he's gone, and it's a knockdown. The referee's given it. Has he? Yes, he has. He was a terrific right hand. And it's all about staying calm now for Liam Williams. A nice, sensible approach now. He knows he got him hurt. He knows how to hurt him. He almost sprints off out of the corner, and he will now go looking for Alantes Fox and looking to end this fight right here and now. But he needs to find space to find clear shots in the final minute. That's perfect with that, John. It is the space. Even though he's still going to jump on him fast, he's got to maintain that distance so Fox can hold on to him. That's a lovely, oh, lovely body shot there from Williams. Fox wanting to hold on and buy time. Not surprisingly, that body shot caused the gloves to momentarily drop. And the problem with Fox, though, because there's such a habit of throwing oh, a good shot. Oh, good shot again. Fox did well to stay up from that. There's such a habit to put that left hand low after he throws a jab that he can't change it now when you're under pressure, which means that right hand is the perfect shot for Liam Williams. Alantes Fox is going to win this fight from here. It's going to be some turnaround, and he's going looking to put him down again here. Oh, great right hand there from Williams. Somehow Fox holds on, buys time, and is he going to see it through to the end of the round? It looks as though he will, but this has been a massive round for Liam Williams. Huge round. <laughs> Let's watch again how that attack unfolded. What a shot that was! He was, and he didn't quite lift. He didn't quite hit him with the jab, but he didn't. He didn't panic. He didn't overextend with the right hand. He slid that left foot in. See that forward momentum and turn it from the waist. It's a perfect delivered shot. And with Fox dangling the left hand low, though he's asking for trouble. Look how low the left hand is for Fox, and that's a great shot from Williams.
It really is. And then also, because he turned around the target there, makes it hard for Fox to hold on to him. He's boxing really well. It's a really good round there from Williams. Tonight, he takes a few shots. Fit, strong, strong. Go backwards again, Joe, and I see another round like this and stop it. Troy Fox, Salance's dad, who's his coach. How does he get out of the hole? He's in here. Well, his coach and his dad just said, if I see another round like that, I'm going to stop it, I think he said. Or, or you're getting stopped, possibly. Well, that's how Barry's got it, and I don't see how anybody could disagree. And Williams going looking for big punches again. He just looks too big, and, and every time Williams gets close, there just seems a massive panic around Fox and everything he does. Oh, that's a great shot. It's only a matter of time, surely. He's on unsteady legs, and he's looking for no more than survival. But yeah, almost yeah. fell over there. But look how he turns the body like he almost doesn't want to know. It's a weird, it's a weird little thing. Good and he, job and those, he does. Good job those ropes were tightened up, eh? <laughs> this is nice one, Williams. He's not rushing anything. He knows he's got him. He knows he's got him on the end of the hook now. So he's just taking his time, working him over slowly. But not, not, not letting him off the hook, and that's the important part, not letting him recover. Fox looks a little bit groggy, not surprisingly. And see all those bad habits that he's had with the hands, though, because he's so big and tall, he's got away with it. No, they, sometimes they're habits you can't change when you need them most of all, uh, when you're under pressure and in trouble like he is now. He needs to keep that left hand glued to his head somehow needs to find a big shot from somewhere to dissuade the onward march of Liam Williams. There's a big gambling swing, which was nowhere. Right hand from Williams, and again, he's just holding on, trying to survive, and the ref's going to have a word with him. I think he's taking a point, he is. Point away for holding. Steve Gray really left with no alternative. And that's a worry, Fox. Every time he gets hit with the right hand, you see his, his arms flay out because he's looking to hold. A decent right hand there from Fox. He's just got to try and fire when Williams comes forward, try and catch him on the move. It's good from Williams, right hand, but a little half a step back there as well. Just so he didn't catch anything, now Fox was willing to throw back. Fox looking to hit him with a right-hand counter as he comes in close. Oh, just, just a little bit short there with that right-hand, Williams. Oh, he missed by a whisker. Yeah, just skimming the target, wasn't it? I think this is good. You know, he could have gone all out until I got the stoppage in this round, but I just think, I think if he, if he does this, he breaks him down, you know? I, I, and he's, and he's, he's sort of, like, staying safe as well. He might make his silly mistakes. Control and discipline, and it's a different than Williams to what we're used to, let's be honest, or in the past, where he's where his hands through his head and he's got himself in trouble, even in wins. It's a good, dot, lovely work. Oh, two big left hands, and he's going to go again. Referee might stop it. He's looking, it's going to be all over. He's gone down, and it's all over. Referee saw the end coming, and Liam, Liam Williams gets the dream result. Tremendous performance, and Williams is heading for a world title shot. Do you know what people have been saying about Liam Williams? He's world class, he's destined for this, he's destined for that. And I've said he looks fantastic, but he's only boxed domestic opponents, except for Liam Smith, of course. And as he's only boxed domestics, he's only beaten domestic opponents, this fight will tell us where he is in the world stage. And he blasted him out there. He, it was an easy, it turned out to be an easy fight there for Liam Williams. He looked fantastic. And he's proved now that that was an eliminator and he deserves it. And his next fight should be for the world title. And he's he, he's arrived. At this uh, No, people will be saying he's arrived, but tonight, for me, he's arrived. Absolutely. Liam can sometimes be sensitive to criticism. But here's the other side of the coin. Here's the praise. Tonight, he was terrific. He was. Control everything you want. A mature display for his age now. He's disciplined. He's learned, he's learned from his errors in the past. He was controlled, he didn't rush his work. Everything about it, though, they look, always looking to be busy, but not getting too close at times. Look at this now, he knows Fox is just trying to hold on for dear life. He was and gone he, there. He, he, he was well gone, the referee was already on his way in, but, to be fair, by then. Those right hands, he couldn't miss him in those right hands. He literally couldn't. And the judgment of the distance, the timing was good. 
and he and he was a, he was aggressive without being over aggressive and being wild. Everything was controlled there with Williams, and that's the important part. The world level, you have to control that aggression, and I think he did that to a T tonight. Yeah, great shots, the accuracy in that work, and he boxes. He's boxing now with an arrogance, not just an angry man that people call him. He's boxing with an arrogance to a man who thinks he's good enough to be a world champion. He's fighting with a maturity as well. He was in against somebody here tonight who could potentially have made it so awkward, so difficult. With that sort of reach, he could have spoiled, it could have been a mess tonight, but it wasn't to be. He was spot on. You know, your goal's got about yardstick, so you're fighting people who've beat somebody, and, and you know, and, how, and can you beat him better than he beats him? So he, he boxed on. Andre he never did the job like that. Than Liam Williams did. And that don't mean he'll beat Andrade, but what I'm saying is, he's shown that he can do a good job against a guy who's boxed at the highest level. And Whether he won or lost, he boxed at the high level and he and he blasted him out there. So he's proved now where he's at. And let's not forget, after losing to Andrade, that Fox needed an operation on his rotator cuff on uh, on his in his shoulder and also had a problem with his bicep so he fought much of the fight maybe, carrying injury maybe he did maybe he didn't but, and, and you know, you've got to take his word for it but the fact is that he's boxed at a high level Liam Williams did a far better job than the champion did and I think that's quite important and for him for him as more than anything else it was he was great tonight he was fantastic he certainly was and a lot of praise as well for the fighter and also for a good trainer, a very good trainer in Dominic Ingle, and we can now get confirmation of the result that Liam Williams dreamed of from Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 59 seconds of round number five. Our referee, Steve Gray, waves off the contest. Your winner by way of technical countdown. And now the WBO Intercontinental Middleweight Champion, Liam the Machine Williams. Congratulations from the beaten man who sportingly holds his hand aloft. Liam Williams tonight, you talk about messages, that really was one to the whole of the middleweight division.